dry camping. Is it right for you? Hi, thanks for joining us. Today we're up at Starvation Reservoir in eastern Utah, and it is beautiful. <laughs> if we haven't met yet, we are John and Holly with Let's Go Now Adventures, and our channel's about all things camping. Whether you're into tent camping or RV camping, our goal is to help you have a great camping experience. Our topic today is dry camping. What is it? What will you need? And is it right for you? And some of the pros and cons. You know, I think a good place to start is what is dry camping and what does dry camping mean? So basically, dry camping is camping in an RV without any hookups. So you can either be in a campground or outside of one, which would mean you may have a fee or it may be free. Your site may or may not have picnic tables, fire rings, or water. So the key here is, is if you plan on going dry camping, be prepared. So dry camping doesn't necessarily mean that you're off grid, but your site will definitely be more remote and lack the basic things like electricity, flushable toilets, running water, and cell service. Now, before we get into talking about dry camping, Let's just say that there's no one right way to camp. Everyone will have their ideal way of camping. For some, the thought of camping without hookups could seem crazy, while others, the thought of being next to someone or 15 feet away from another trailer or RV is absolutely not what they thought the idea of camping is all about. But you know what? That's so awesome in that everybody can choose a camping experience that's right for them. So, if you're feeling a little bit more adventurous, you may want to try dry camping. So, let's take, for example, our site here at Starvation Reservoir. Now, it's considered a primitive dry camping site. Yes, we are in a campground, but no, there aren't any hookups. There was a picnic table and a fire ring, but absolutely no water around. <laughs> There are a few outhouses just sporadic through the campground though. Now this state park has both primitive sites on one side of the lake and on the other side of the lake they have sites with full hookups. Now we've stayed on both sides and I have to tell you that I think John and I both prefer the dry camping primitive side which leads up to some of the pros and cons of dry camping. I think one of the biggest pros, at least for me, is that the sites are much more spread out. I really like my space when we're camping and I'm not a big fan of being right next to anyone else. Now, if you're outside of a campground, you'll easily be able to find spots with tons of space. Another plus is that just by being a little bit more secluded and spread out, I find myself being able to reconnect on a deeper level with nature and de-stress from the outside world. Give me a thumbs up if you know what I mean. <laughs> Another plus is that it's challenging. You have to be smart and responsible to make this work. And yet, it's very rewarding when it does. I know we feel accomplished after a fun, successful dry camping trip. It's also less expensive. The fee for this site is $20 a night versus $38 a night um, on the other side of the campground, which is full hookup. And some dry camping sites outside of campgrounds can actually be free. I guess a con would be you may not have cell service, but gosh, in a way it's a huge plus depending on how you look at it. Another con is, is that if you're not prepared, you could find yourself in a little bit of a pickle. Let me tell you about our experience. Now, we have actually been to this primitive dry camping site a while ago, but over the last year, the water has washed out some of the road. We pulled into the site at 9.30 at night, and it was dark. This dirt road, if you didn't know where you were going, it would be hard to find any site. <laughs> Luckily, we had been here, but as we went to pull in, the water had washed the road out and had we not have been prepared and taken some precautions as to look out for where we were going, we would have been in the lake. This road right here is just not wide enough 
for us to pull the RV in. So, you know, being prepared is key. Now, while dry camping is a great way to enjoy a little bit more peace and quiet, you do need to be prepared. After all, you need to provide for everything for yourself, your family, or your group. When you decide to go dry camping, it's so important to know what your surroundings will be like. Will you be driving on pavement or is it a dirt road, for example? What facilities will be available? Is there going to be water or will there be bathrooms, a fire ring, or maybe even tables? You want to be able to provide the basic necessities to keep yourself comfortable and safe. You know, complete independence and self-reliance is key here. If you do decide you would like to try dry camping, maybe all you have ever done in the past is with full hookups. Well, here are some things that you'll want to think about. Now, this list is not all inclusive, but it's just some things to get you thinking along the right lines. So take a look and you know your rig for, you know, your RV camping with no hookups. Know how much fresh water your rig can hold. Now you have a decision. Will you be traveling with that fresh water in your tank or will you be filling it up somewhere closer to your location? If you are filling it up closer to your location, how are you gonna get the water from a jug or a storage container into your trailer? Holly's gonna be sh showing you here while I talk a way that we use to get water into the fresh water tank that's much easier than holding it up and trying to pour it in. You know, in addition to water, you'll want to look at your power. How much capacity do your house batteries on your RV have? And do you have a way of regenerating those? Whether it's through a generator or solar or even wind, how are you going to replenish the battery's power and capacity that you lost overnight while you ran maybe your furnace, your water pump, and your lights? You know, one thing to think about, if you're dry camping, you may find yourself actually needing to camp a little bit more like a tent camper, meaning that in the evening you're using battery powered lanterns instead of the lights in your RV. You know, another thing to think about is that there may not be a table. So will you have a place to sit around when you go camping? You may need to bring your own. And last is there may not be a fire pit. Now a fire pit's important for fire safety and the prevention of forest fires. So you either need to take a fire pit or build a fire pit to safely have a fire. Now there's another thing that you may want to consider and that's having a propane fire pit. The reason the propane fire pit is nice is that you've got campfire when the Forest Service says that there's no way you can have a campfire because fire danger is too high. If you've got a, a propane fire pit, you've still got your campfire and all the ambiance and enjoyment that goes along with that. So there are both benefits and downsides to dry camping, but at the end of the day, it just comes down to your taste for adventure. Whatever type of camping you decide to do, just remember to leave the site better than when you found it. In other words, leave no trace. Yes. Thank you for watching and be sure to subscribe to our channel for all sorts of tips and tricks about all things camping. We loved having you along today, and we will see you on the next adventure. Bye-bye.